Great question. Mahabla Besansis, you're welcome for today's class. Nice to see you. How are you, Maharaj? Fine, thank you. I accept my base. Mahabla Besansis, Maharaj, thank you for coming. So I will put the verse on the screen so you can start, please. So today we will read from the Sriman Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 8, text 25. Pray yes, Maharaj. Yes, it's on the screen. Yes. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Vipada Santuta Sasvat Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru. Bhavato Dakshanam Yatshyat Apunna Bhava Dakshanam But for what translation? Vipada Calamities Shanto Let there be Ta O Sasvat Again and again Tatra Dekh Tatra and Dekh Jagat Guru, O Lord of the Universe, Bhavata, your Darshanam, meeting, yet that which Sya is Apuna, not again, Bhava Darshanam, seeing repetition of birth and death. Translation and purpose by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Translation. I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again, so that we could see you again and again, for seeing you means that we will no longer see repeated births and deaths. Purport. Generally the distressed, the needy, the intelligent and the inquisitive who have performed some pious activities <laughs> They worship or begin to worship the Lord. Others who are thriving on misdeeds only, regarded, regardless of status, cannot approach the Supreme due to being misled by the illusory energy. Therefore, for a pious person, if there is some cal calamity there, there is no other alternative than to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Constantly remembering the lotus feet of the Lord means preparing for liberation from birth and death. Therefore, even though there are so-called calamities, they are welcome because they give us an opportunity to remember the Lord, which means liberation. When we have taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, which are accepted as the most suitable boat for crossing the ocean of nations can achieve liberation as easily as one leaps over the holes made up by the hoofs of a calf. Such persons are meant to reside in the abode of the Lord. And they have nothing to do with the place where there is danger in every step. This material world is certified by the Lord in the Bhagavad Gita as a dangerous place full of calamities. Less intelligent persons prepare plans to adjust those calamities without knowing that the nature of this place is itself full of calamities. They have no information of the abode of the Lord, which is full of bliss and without trace of calamity. The duty of the same person, therefore, is to be undisturbed by worldly calamities, which are sure to happen in all circumstances. Suff suffering all sorts of unavoidable, uh, unavoidable misfortunes, one should make progress in spiritual realization, because that is the mission of human life. The spirit soul is transcendental to all material calamities, therefore, the so-called calamities are called false. A man may see a tiger swallowing him in a dream, 
and you may cry for this calamity. Actually, there is no tire, there is no suffering. It is simply a case of dreams. In the same way, all calamities of life are said to be dreams. If someone is lucky enough to get in contact with the Lord by devotional service, it's all gain. Contact with the Lord by any one of the nine devotional services is always a, f a forward step on the path of going back to God. Reading again the verse. Vipadasantata sattva tattva tattva jagat karu bhavado dakshnam yatsya apuna bhava dakshana. I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again so that we could see you again and again. For seeing you means that we will no longer see repeated births and deaths. Omajana timanda shantanam tanasadakam sakshin vitam yinatas mai sigarabhim. Chichetanya manavisam staptam yinatutalishyam rupkadamam dadati svapadantikam. Avandiyam siru siru da padakam nam sigam vaisnavam sa. Sīrūpam jāgajātam sākānarakhnātam kitam tam sācīvam sātvaitam sāvadūtam parijāna sāvaitam Sī Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sī Rādha Krishna Padam sākānlita Sī Vishākam kitam sā E Krishna Karuna Sinodīna Vandājyata Te Parupai Sākopya Kantarāt Kantamanasthati Tapta Kansna Kavan Hirade Vangavanasve Vesivana Sita Devi Panamana Hiti Vaka Kalta Vishan Kripas Namivsa Panamta Panabhyo Vaisnamya Namana Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Vasadi Vodakta Vina Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hai Ram, Hai Ram, 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 Hai Hai. Namo Vishnu Padai Krishna Vastaya Bhutali Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinam. Namaste Sarasvata Devi Kaurvan Pachayam. Nirvishish Vinivad Paskachayam Pusatavya. So this is a famous verse, but also an extraordinary verse. That um, who in this world would desire to have calamities when one is free from them? That uh, we can say no same person would desire that. Only a crazy person actually would desire that. That. Uh, but remember all the calamities the Pandavas went through. That uh, the, the cause they fed Bhima a poisoned cake. That uh, is a whole story. They lost their kingdom, the grand gambling match. That. Uh, they were put into a house of luck. They had to live in the forest. They were at attacked by Hidimba and man eaters and by other demons. And then this battle of Kurukshatri, etc. they went through. So many calamities the Pandavas went through. So, there was no shortage of calamities in their lives. That, uh, and they were in a very desperate situation for many years. Finally, then there was the battle. This battle which was not a calamity. And then finally, the battle was won. All their enemies were killed. Now the kingdom was theirs. 
for the average person this this would be let's say a time for celebration like but all the calamities they were finished but should we say thank you Krishna and now we live in a favorable situation then there will be happiness and so forth but being Kunti says at that moment no I want these calamities again and again it sounds like a masochist that so sometimes people's mind get too much devastated by the material energy I remember in the Christian tradition I won't mention the tradition but there is a practice that they practice it to a very small degree it's not so common but but, but a monk who is very serious in understanding that they have lived sinfully in the past and they are understanding that this body is a cause of misery that uh, and would they, they and, and they understand that if I'm not careful the, the body will be attracted to so many things or and it will in, implicate me further they have programs, programs called self-flagination they have a, a whip and they are, they are torturing themselves they put it on the back they stab themselves, they cut themselves because they feel that this body is very bad we must punish this body and make it clear to ourselves that we should not entertain this body but in Krishna Conscience we can't do that but in some some in Christianity they do that and some of them have even become saints so what's the situation here for Green Country? that requires a deeper understanding first Srila Prabhupada mentions that also in the purpose that uh, she understand that life in this material world from the material viewpoint is very dangerous there is a danger of fall down every moment that uh, fall down means that we get facility for material enjoyment and then we become attracted to that facility and before you know you are deviated from Krishna consciousness by the allurements of material life we become attracted by our likes and aversion to our dislikes attachment and aversion stumbling blocks on a path spiritual realization what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 334 that Gaga and Vesha that um, the first thing to understand here is that if that we can experience only a real happiness then we have taken shelter of Krishna that's the first thing what we need really is a shelter of Krishna and how to get that, that uh, for from Queen County's perspective she says if it's up to me to accept or reject the shelter of Krishna I may not accept it I may rather choose now that we are in a royal position the war is over the palace is nice so much money 
let's, let, let, let us now increase our enjoyment. So, Pinkunti has that perspective on herself. So having that pers perspective on herself, and having had the experience of being in exile and going to, and going through so many calamities. She remembered when, when there were all these calamities every day, I was forced to take shelter as Krishna. We had no choice. We simply had to call out Krishna and Krishna would help. We he would come and we would feel happy. If you want happiness, so that's the conclusion of Pinkunti. If we want happiness, then we need calamities. But there is a deeper point here. And this is discussed by Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami has written this Sat Sandharmas, Sandharvas. And in one of the six, it's called the Pretty Sambhava. And there he discusses this specific verse. That, uh, so, of course, He writes there, Jiva Goswami, this statement by Queen Kunti, it shows that she is on a level of Krishna Prima. And that level of Krishna Prima is called Anuraga. So we know from Madhurya Kalambini from Sila Vishwanath Sakavarti Thakur, the nine stages of devotional service, Shrada, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartani Vritti, Nista, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhava and Prema. So here, Shiva Goswami says, <coughs> Queen Kunti, she's on the level of Prema, but uh, we, we, we may think, yes, that's it, I attain prema, then no, there are also levels of prema that uh, there are also levels of prema, six levels, sneya, pralaya, mana, raga, anuraga, Bhava and Ma Bhava. Uh, seven, yeah. And Ma Bhava does the ecstasy of Shimadalarani. There is nothing beyond that. But here is it Anuraga. So Shiva Goswami says it is showing that she is on the level of Anuraga. What does it mean? to be on the level of Anuraga. So there it's explained by Jeeva Goswami. Raga means attachment. Anuraga means deep attachment or attachment following certain phenomena. Jeeva Goswami explains the symptom of this is that the devotee treasures Krishna so much and, treasure, and treasures Krishna consciousness so much that and treasures her de devotional service so much and is experienced so much of these things that whatever the, whatever the price to get Krishna is or whatever the price it is to get service to Krishna or whatever the price to get that ex ecstasy that they are experiencing service 
to Krishna, by serving Krishna, the experience is just so amazing. It's so amazing and super mundane that it doesn't matter what, what any pri whatever price you have to pay for it. But, uh, so any price to pay, it doesn't matter. The, the price to pay is ridiculously low to what you get. That uh, the price seems nothing compared to what you get from it. So what, what do we get from it? What are the benefits of devotional service? And the benefit of the ecstasy you get. The benefit is so outstanding. Any price seems nothing. What do you get? You are transcending birth, death, old age and disease. Eternal benefit. That, uh, that because this birth, death, old age and disease, these are our basic sufferings. You get out of suffering. That, uh, so, without Krishna for Queen Kunti, it's not worth living. So the point is for her, what's the quickest way to get Krishna? That. So that's the level of Queen Kunti, Anuraga. But who is on the level of Queen Kunti among us? That uh, it's very exceptional. That, uh, so. so in Kali Yuga, yeah, Queen Kunti was praying for suffering calamities, but in Kali Yuga you don't have to pray for that. It comes on his own accord. That's, sometimes we think, yes, I took birth in Kali Yuga, I become a devotee, everything will be all right now. But the fact that we have been born in Kali Yuga means you have a lot of bad karma, otherwise you don't. They take, you don't take birth in Kali Yuga. But, uh, yes, that's a fact. You don't take birth in Kali Yuga. So suffering will be there. And serious suffering for everyone. That time. But now, how can we deal with this suffering? And Srila Prabhupada explains in the Bhagavad Gita, First, he starts to say, yes, who takes shelter of Krishna if there are calamities? Taking shelter of Krishna if we have difficulties. You must be pious. That's the first condition. And he refers to Bhagavad Gita 7, 4, 7, 16, Sato Vidavi Chantiman, Jnana, Sukhinin Aryana, Artesigna Shartakti, Janisha Bharatavsama. And he mentioned this four in the purport. The distrust, the needy, the intelligent, and the inquisitive. So they take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. But what does it take to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. That uh, if everything goes all right, then yes, we take shelter. But from the moment you get difficulties, then yeah, we say thank you. No, we 
in our service to Krishna, there will be difficulties also, so-called happiness and distress. But we should tolerate it and not be enticed by the so-called happiness or the distress. But see, but that brings up what should be our attitude toward suffering in this world. That, uh, so, and in the in the Bhagavatam, there, there are different verses with which point specifically to the inner attitude of a devotee on suffering, when suffering comes. And of course, the first verse is a, is a, is a, is a verse from Lord Brahma, that, uh, who prays to Krishna that Tenu Kampam Sisamekshima Bunjatma Ivatna Kitam Vipa Kamri Dvakva Prabhupada Vida Dhamma Sti Siveti Yomukti Vade Sabai Sudaya Bhak. So this verse is also about how to get Krishna's mercy that requires surrender. And that surrender is facilitated by a right attitude towards suffering. That uh, you should understand the suffering is due to our past misdeeds. That our present life, our present body, it's all a product of our own previous actions. That uh, every moment we experience these reactions, because the body itself is a reaction. That, and the pleasure and uh, the pleasure and the distress you get. That uh, yes, they come. What's the proof that this is our karma? If you, uh, I'm sure all of you have made plans in life how to become happy in this world. All the Palatma had said, your happiness will start when we, the day you stop making plans to be happy in this world. That, uh, and this is explained by Sutta Goswami in the yeah well Sutta Goswami tells how Narada Moini instructed Srila Vyasa and he says Narada Moini says to Vyasa that's that uh, yes that tasheva ito payate to go for do na lapyate ad brahmatam yo payata da lapyate do ka anya te sukam kalesa vata kabira ramasa he said an intelligent man he should um he should try to find out what's not obtainable in this world and that's what we Kunti wants. And now the money said as happiness and distress is concerned, it can be obtained automatically in course of time. That just the distress will come, that uh, as happiness comes, misery comes, but we do not want them. We want only happiness, but who, who gets only happiness? Distress comes also. So, the happiness and distress are reactions, but they give reactions to the body. The soul is, I do want that. that uh, so, the devotee sees, yes, 
These are the reactions of my own actions in the past. And therefore, it's right. I've done that to others. And now I get the suffering. And that's Krishna's supreme law that, uh, of justice. And the devotee thinks, yes, I was such a fallen person in the past. I've done such much horrible things and I feel really bad about it. And it's good that I suffer. Then I don't do it again. But Krishna is so kind to give me only a little of the suffering. So that in an attitude, if you have that attitude, then most of your suffering already goes. It's most the suffering is experienced in the mind here. Really. You let it go. That, uh, So Krishna, suffering is Krishna's mercy. That is Krishna's mercy. And how can we say it's Krishna's mercy? That, uh, but Krishna, because Krishna says it. In uh, uh, chapter 88 of the 10th canto, verse 8, he explains Yasyam Anoghenami, how to get Krishna's mercy. Krishna explains how to get his mercy. Do we want to get his mercy? Yes, we want. Ben Kunti also wants the mercy. He wants the shortcut. Krishna gives the shortcut here. How can you see that someone has got the mercy of the Lord? Arishyata Dhanam Sanai. How do I take away all what he has? All what he thinks is mine. And Tato Dham Te And then when, when he gets rid of all his possessions, all his wealth is gone, He's a poverty stricken man, his relatives reject him. He's going to one distress after another. Svajana to Kadukida. He's going to one distress of another. Such a person has got the mercy of the Lord. That's a high level. That uh, are we ready for that? But this is surrender. Accepting everything good and bad as a mercy of the Lord. This, it's not that we get good things for the body and the mind and say, oh, Krishna is so merciful. But when it goes bad, it bad, it's not his, his mercy. No. It is also his mercy. And that is part of the process of surrender. But Queen Kundi is beyond that. She is a complete surrendered soul for a long time. But she has experienced ecstasy of always thinking of Krishna. And is in this higher stage of love. And whatever, well, anyone, any price to pay for that love is radically low comparison to what we get from it. So the question for us is here, what can we learn from that? that uh, and Srila Prabhupada bring it very practically in the pur purpose to our level, that, uh, yes. So suffering all sorts of unavoidable mis misfortunes one should make progress in spiritual realization because that is the mission of human life. The spirit soul is transcendental to all material calamities and therefore the so-called calamities are false. They are false. Are they illusion? No. They are there for the body. But the soul does not experience the pain, 
The soul experiences the pain because we are identifying with the body. Like we are identifying with the mind many times. That, uh, so, this is this false ego. That uh, a man may see a tiger swallowing in a dream and he may cry for this calamity. That brings us to a high point of realization and I'm, I'm always intrigued by to, to hear Krishna's words in Bhagavad Gita in the 13th chapter that uh, text 30 Prakitsev Sakaramani Kriyamani Sarvasa Yabasa Tatatma Makartam Sa Pashati when we can see that all activities are performed by the body which is created of material nature and sees that the self does nothing, nothing actually sees. It's all done by material nature. Like you go to the cinema, you go to the film, and you know, now with the pandemic, they don't do that anymore. But formerly, they went to the cinema, and in the cinema hall, they would see the film of one big screen and everyone's mind would become absorbed in it. And if some, some happy scene is there, everyone would laugh and then suddenly some calamity appeared, appeared on the screen. That someone died or whatever. That, uh, and yes, everyone is crying in the cinema hall. But what's happening? Why do they laughing, crying? On the screen, there's only, only some lights going. <laughs> they identify with it. And that's the point. We identify with this body that uh, and that's very dangerous and Green Kunta, Kunti realizes that yes that uh, I want to be the absorbed in devotional service not in this body not in this so called good, good and bad only my service of Krishna. And that's the way to transcend that. Mamsi of Gapicharine Bhakti Yogna Sevati Sakutan Samati Chitampama Buya Kalpati. Then one can transcend this mode of material nature. Then one sees, yes, the soul is not anything in this world. The only desire that. Uh, but the soul has the need, has needs, the body has needs. If we are too much absorbed in, in the needs of the body, we stay in this world. But we should come to understand and realize the needs of the soul, which is love and to be loved. Thus, this prema. It's going to come to us. That she had this prema, this anuraga, as Ibn Goswami said. Therefore, whatever the price is, I want always think, think, of, think of Krishna. That I um, become absorbed in love. His mouth. And she felt, yes, these nice times, that's very dangerous. We may forget the Lord again. And she cannot bear separation from Krishna. I remember when I went with Palad Nanamaraj to Serbia right after the war, 
to visit the devotees. Then we came in Belgrade, the devotees were in an apartment, we were very fear fearful from the war. Devastating. But they they were very Krishna conscious. Very serious in their practice. But then five, six years later after the war, they became less serious. Interesting. So calamities is not always a bad situation. It can be used to surrender to Krishna. If, if, when everything goes nice for the for the other senses, then we it's a dangerous situation. We may lose interest. But so that's these are the messages that I understood from this first. Please have a, any questions, comments? Hare Krishna Mara, thank you very much for the class. Hare Krishna. We are happy to have you on the platform. So, um, devotees, uh, um, I've not, I've not seen any hands up, but I have a question. Please. Um, discussing about uh, Mother Quinty, um, in the series of the discussion about the personality of Mother Kunti, there was a question yesterday on this platform. Um, several individuals who are parties in the play of Krishna's pastimes in the Mahabharata were described to have some previous activities. So my, right, my question is, could you um, share with us who was Mother Kunkunti in her previous life? And probably what could be the cause of her, or maybe her previous activities that has caused her to go through so many challenges in this present life, um, bodies? Yes, uh, I don't know about the previous lives of Mother Kunkunti. But of course, from the previous context, we can understand since since she is on the level of prema she's certainly an eternal associate of the lord but uh, yes we know because our son yeah she had a, the five upon the bus where our sons how tune as you need to share proper experience is an eternal associate of the Lord. And he, he travels with Krishna from universe to universe to facilitate fi finally the speaking of Bhagavad Gita. That uh, but Queen Kunti, yes, the Mahabharat Ma starts with Pandu and Queen Kunti is there. That, but it it doesn't give an insight on what's before that. Uh, but of course, there are certain script scriptures which may give that insight. But it's it's an interest, interesting point. But from from the present situation of someone's life, we can understand something about previous lives. That. Uh, so we have these Pandavas here. They are going to so many calamities. Does it mean that in their previous life they did so many bad things that they get now these reactions? No, it's not. They are pure devotees. That's clearly explained by our Acharyas. And they are there to facilitate Krishna's pastimes. And Krishna uses them to show what surrender means. What surrender means. So on that platform we can understand the eternal associates of the Lord. That, uh, yeah, that does not mean that there was maybe not a previous life or what, but 
I don't have that information. Hey, Christian. Anything else, please? Thank you very much, Maharaj. Um, Good. I do not see any devotee hands up for question and answer, any question or comment. So I want to assume that, that uh, devotees are satisfied with the presentation you've made, my right? And I'm not willing to ask any question. No. I'm, so on this, I'm, looking, on this note, I'm looking forward to the next opportunity to serve you all. Yeah, we look forward to having you again on this platform. Thank you so much for Thank you. honoring this platform and giving us your association. Hare Krishna. So we request all of the devotees to please kindly unmute themselves. Let us chat, loudly chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra loudly to appreciate Maharaj for giving us his association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maharaj.